Welcome to Windows on the World. Well, the media and MPs are losing a grip on their own fragmented reality. They're making ever more ridiculous and unbelievable statements. Um, now, this is what happens when they refuse to accept public opinion. For instance, a European Commission employee today has sent a letter to all MPs demanding they vote to prevent Brexit. I thought it already happened. The letter claimed that Brexit was not an exercise in real democracy. <laughs> and the decision was far too complex for the uninformed electorate. Um, now this is very, very interesting too. Top law firm Mishkondorea has threatened to take the government to court if it does not call a Commons vote before activating the treaty, Article 50. They are demanding the government not withdraw from the EU without an Act of Parliament. It is being brought on behalf of a group of their clients. Now this is how ridiculous it's getting. So I'm here with Piers Corbyn and we're going to catch up on the Corbyn coup part two. Piers. Right. Well, these interesting developments uh, teach everyone a lot and I would urge anybody to watch very carefully everything that happens because in moments of crisis, the elites in Britain, Europe and the world spill a lot of beans and then you can see what is really going on and that is their problem people are actually understanding about what's going on uh, and see through the BBC's attempts just to talk up any little argument into some type of movement when the real movement is on the ground in the last few days we've seen unprecedented mass mobilizations of ordinary people standing for democracy standing for my brother to continue as the leader of the Labour Party with his massive mandate unprecedented mandate we've seen 60,000 people join the Labour Party in the last few days we, we now got the Labour Party bigger than it has ever been but this isn't what the sort of thing the media talks about they talk about little arguments amongst the uh, Blairite uh, attempt uh, 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 coup people who um, are carrying on as if somehow they've got a mandate but they have no mandate whatsoever. Now Tom Watson said at a parliamentary Labour Party meeting that he told Mr Corbyn he needed the MPs and not just party members if he wanted to stay in his post. He was meeting with unions and it's uh, in the standard here it says Corbyn faces threat from key union as he clings on. This is about Unison's Labour Link annual conference. It says Jeremy Corbyn today faced the threat of losing the backing of a key trade union as he battled to cling on to office. Um, it says here that, um, that it's, it actually, it's quite interesting. It refers to him as the um, Islington North MP rather than the leader of the Labour Party. It says, meanwhile, Labour's deputy leader, Tom Watson, launched a last throw of the dice. How many more throws of the dice are we going to have to try to get his superior to stand down to avoid a leadership challenge? Mr Corbyn's allies, though, were digging in for a fierce fight with another rally planned for tomorrow. Angela Eagle, who resigned as shadow business secretary, has delivered an ultimatum to the Labour leader to step down or face a leadership challenge. So, Piers... The headline there is a typical deceitful headline in the Evening Standard. They talk up the shenanigans as if they are representing something. Actually, the unions are backing my brother 100%. Because the unions want change in this country. They know we cannot go on and on and on having the rich getting richer and the poor getting poorer. And Jeremy is the key politician in the country to negotiate a fair Brexit for people on the ground and continue the fight, the Labour Party's fight, for a fairer Britain. So what we've seen is the Blairite manoeuvrers, uh, their coup, um, if you like, has turned into a chicken coup. And uh, Angela Eagle has taken off, but the Eagle has never landed. Um, she keeps threatening every day, I'm giving an ultimatum to my brother. Uh, you know, if you don't resign, I'll stand against you. Well, she's been told a number of times by a lot of people around the country, well, if you want to stand against him, you can stand against him. There is a process. And Jeremy is saying, well, OK, we're ready. But they don't want to stand because they will lose. And I don't think the BBC want a big contest either. They prefer to keep it in the Palace of Westminster. Um, but what the BBC are doing and this is important to understand, is they're taking the public as stupid imbeciles. 
and the public are seeing through it. And that's shown by, again, as I said, those mass mobilizations. You see, they're trying to drive a wedge, a conflict between Remainers and Leavers, and it hasn't worked. And uh, I think the reason why it hasn't worked is that people have started to think just, just why were they Remainers and, uh, or, or Leavers? And um, you see, most people who voted Remain, they did it as a kind of a feeling. You know, unity is good, and and they also, BBC were portraying the other side as dominated by racists or something like that, or a lot of it. So therefore, if you vote to leave, you might be a racist. So They've kept the argument incredibly simple, but what's been did. very good is that a lot of they the major newspapers simple. have have given a lot more information absolutely, absolutely. since since we left. Mm, and mm, uh, mm, so for instance, like e how EU grants have taken away our industry. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. You see. People can now see the issue wasn't really just about immigration. The BBC deliberately talked about that all the time. And they did not talk much about the deindustrialization process, which, as you say, is, is the core of the European Union. And that is why big capital, Wall Street capital, want the EU. That is why Goldman Sachs, the biggest investment bank uh, you know, on Wall Street, backs the European Union and wants to keep this prison of peoples whereby they can force down wages. And smaller capitalists don't like that. They, want, they don't want all these rules and so on imposed on them. They want to do business in a more normal manner, which is why you've had a split of very big businesses back in the European Union, smaller ones, a lot of them saying no. And as I said, the key thing is it's about democracy, and it's about defending our laws and preventing the deindustrialization of, of, of Britain. See, the idea that globalization is forever good, that's just nonsense. Globalization causes conflict, exploitation, um, and division. And, you know, it, it, all sorts of aspects about international trade are very good, and, and, but we should re reduce certain trade barriers, we should reduce trade barriers to Africa for example, because the European Union is a trade barrier against Africa. If we're out of the EU, we don't have them. And that'll be better trade with Africa. And Africa can develop better, therefore. Trade, not aid. Remainers have, have got, you know, good feelings, and, uh, but they're seeing, seeing through them. You see, the more you look into the way the European Union actually works, the more worried one becomes. Um, you see, it is about deindustrialization. It is about uh, uh, Wall Street. And when you look in detail at those people who are attacking Jeremy because allegedly he didn't back the U European Union uh, Remain campaign enough, which of course is ridiculous. I mean, he was a very serious and, and, and effective backer. It's just the public, you know, don't think we can reform the European Union. But, you know, there's, there's a case you can make, and w w which he did. Margaret Hodge, the original mover of the no confidence vote in. Uh, against my brother in Parliament, of course. So her other name is Oppenheimer. She's part of the Oppenheimer family that have massive ownership and investment in Stemcor, which is a steel uh, steel operation in Europe. And uh, obviously, you know, her interests in Europe are not just about what my brother's saying. It's about she wants to stay in the European Union to do the deals that they will get out of that business. And. She's also, of course, been accused, and she was forced to resign in 2005 from her post as Minister of State for Children because of allegations of child abuse in Islington. Now, these issues about child abuse and so forth are still running, and her and Harriet Harman are still uh, potentially facing further accusations. And, and you know, another reason why they like to get of Jeremy is because Jeremy will speak the truth on anything where the truth has to be spoken. And they do not like that. So as we're now in this politics of complete unreality and everything has become fragmented and doesn't make any sense unless it's put in a very, very childish terms, what do you think is going to happen, Piers? Well, the BBC are going to carry on with Project Chaos and the Blairites are digging themselves into a grave. And as long as people stand behind my brother, 
we can win through. We can eventually actually stop this insane process whereby the rich have to get richer and the poor getting poorer. That must be stopped. And my brother and the movement behind him is the movement to stop that. So you, you know, every individual here has to stay active and watch the news carefully, but stay active in defence of the key issues. And that's if you're a Remainer or a Lever. De defence of democracy is the key thing. Defence of the referendum and carrying through in those defence of referendum discussions what you want defended, i.e. workers' rights, fair trade, which does not give the multinationals uh, a way of asset stripping and destroying the British economy and destroying the health service and privatising everything that moves. And we go under the banners of defend democracy, defend the referendum, keep Corbyn, and we demand the Chilcot inquiry is, you know, carried out to the full and whatever needs to be implemented, be implemented, because the Blairites' other agenda is create chaos now to hide behind and you know this is uh, this inquiry shows we believe that tony blair is a war criminal so finally just to end stay in there join the mobilizations keep up the fight for democracy and for a fairer society thanks very much peers and remember everyone out there keep watching those watching us watching windows on the world and there'll be more updates soon Thank <music> you.